Welcome back to the episode of the Muddy Ball Cards podcast. Today we're going to be taking a look at top series one, more specifically some of the rookies in the set and deep diving into the data behind the players rather than just going off of hype where the hobby is at. We've already seen some crazy numbers for some Wander Franco cards that were sold yesterday. The cards just got released, so you still have that initial hype, but these cards prices are crazy and I really wanted to break down five different players to show you guys the data behind them so you have some more information going into a product break or if you're opening up some packs whether you want to buy sell or hold some of these players now unlike other episodes of the money ball cards podcast I didn't go to a card show last weekend and last week I was super busy I just celebrated my 24th birthday and I'm trying to actually buy a house so I'm sorry guys for not uploading last week. Super busy between both of those things. Hopefully we can get the house situation uh, settled. So that way early next year, there is going to be a studio dedicated to sports cards for the Moneyball Cards channel and also breakout cards. I'm crossing my fingers. Uh, what I've been working on actually goes through. But with that being said, let's take a look at some of these players. So we're using one of my favorite sites, which is Fangraphs, 100% free to use. So I'm going to go over here to the top left and we're going to search the first player. Everyone knows him, Wander Franco. I made a full video breaking down Wander Franco, his entire stats. So if you guys want to make sure to check that out for a lot more information. But Franco has been the number one prospect in baseball. He also has some data because he was called up last year and controversy over what his true rookie card was for a little bit. But uh, we see right now the 2022 tops is already taking a lead way, way ahead of his card that was released in, I think it was Bowman's best, but in 70 games last year, he put up a 288 average, he had an on-base percentage of 347, slugging 463, and then WRC plus of 127 and a 2.5 war. So, and some of the numbers that we want to take a look at, power-wise, let's say, let's assume he played 140 games in a year, so we're going to double that. About 14 home runs. Not great. The hobby loves power, but one thing to also mention, he's 20 years old. A lot of players gain their power some of the first years uh, in the league. They grow some size. So I'd be more concerned it's 22, 23, 24 seasons. And how the hobby is right now, is it just entirely focused on what have you done for me now rather than the future potential of a player? People make more money now on betting on prospects to being in the top 10 than a player making the Hall of Fame. Same can be said early on in someone's career. So looking at this, my main concern with Franco is that he's not going to hit enough home runs to get that hobby love. Might be good across the board. We mentioned in the one episode, we go over here, where is it at? His walk percentage and strikeout percentage. So in the minor leagues, I mean, he had single-digit strikeout percentages. Major leagues, it's slightly above 10. I mean, you see right here, it's at 12%. In AAA, he was at 11.7. That's not major leagues, but uh, the 12%. And then his walk percentage varies a little bit between 8 and 12% as well. So strikeout-wise, not much, but power is an issue. And you can even see the minor leagues. AAA did well with the 270 ISO, but... 174 in the majors and then single A plus 125, 189, and 239. So that is an issue across the board. And even in the minor leagues, rookie ball, I mean, in 60 games, he had 11, super young again. But you know, I, I see power as a possible issue in this hobby. He really, really good eye, he doesn't strike out that much, gets on base, but people really like to see power. So hopefully that does change over time. I'm excited for Franco as a Rays fan, but just giving you guys that heads up because you're going to see that all over social media. If Frank only hits 20 or 25 home runs, people are going to call him a bust, which he won't be. I can't say that 100% for sure, but if you hit 25 home runs at age of 20 or 21, that's pretty good. The next prospect we're taking a look at is Jaron Duran. He plays for the Boston Red Sox, drafted in 2018. Got his cup of tea last year. You can see over here, he played 33 games in the major leagues and was pretty bad. A negative war, 215 batting average, a WRC plus a 49. Ouch. But and again, rookie year, only a little bit of data. A lot more to someone's profile than just 30 games. So let's take a look at some more information. One thing I don't like right away, and I advise always against it, 
is prospects that are older. Duran is 25 years old. Ouch. So I would be selling already just based off the age side of things. Players get additional years. Like we talked about Franco, who is 20 years old or about to turn 21. He's going to get four years of additional stats. And the reason why that's important is, let's say Franco hits 175 hits those four years. We're talking about 700 additional hits added to his numbers. If he hits 25 each year as well, that's 100 home runs. That can make a difference between a good player and a Hall of Fame player. Taking a look, though, in the minor league stats, we can see strikeout percentage is really high. Major league was 35. Across the board, 20%. And based on balls, it's kind of low as well. 10.2, 6.5, 10.6, and 3.6. Two things I would take a look at. WFC Plus in the minor leagues, really great. In A ball, 173, 151, 191. Struggle a little bit. Double A, 87, 132 in AAA, and then 49 in major leagues. So, again, things can change, but being 25 years old already has some issues with strikeouts. Would be passing on Duran. Up next, we're going to take a look at Brujan with the Rays. So, the Rays have two big rookies in Series 1. Now, Bruhan already is 24 years old, so it goes back to the Duran side of things. I don't like older prospects, so keep that in mind. I tend to sell those type of players, especially when there's hype. So last year, he got 10 games in the major leagues where he batted 077 and negative 0.5 war. Not great, obviously, but more than that, let's take a look at the minor league stats. So he's been in the minor leagues since 2015 with rookie ball. Across the board, we're looking at a base on ball percentage. And you can see 14 that one year, 6.3, 11, 11, 11, 13, 8. So it's okay. Strikeout percentage, 11%, 12, 13, 15, 15. And then a ballooned in the major leagues at 30%. So minor league strikeout percentage, it's about average. 30% obviously is really, really bad. I don't like that. ISO wise, I mean, you can just see it's very low, which goes back to the one critique I had on Franco is you need to have a decent ISO and power. And you can see the power numbers over here. The most home runs was 12 home runs in 103 games in AAA at the age of 23. So if you extrapolate the data, say, assume that he played 150 games, he would have about 18 home runs as the max. So I'm not liking it. Power numbers are very low. We take a look at average and then WRC plus as well. Average 301, 313, 347. So average is decent. And as you also go up in higher leagues, it's more difficult pitcher. So you can expect that to lower down. WRC plus also see that trending down as well. So I would not be putting too much money into Bruhan. Hope he does well again. Some big race fan, but. Personally, being age 24 and already seeing a decline as uh, competition increases is a big red flag for me. We're going to take a look at another player here is Matt Manning. And Manning was a top prospect for the Tigers pitching-wise. And we're going to put that over here. So Manning, another old rookie at 24 years old. You guys can quickly see why uh, Franco is the best rookie, at least in this class, uh, from people wanting to buy into someone. They're putting all their faith behind him because he's much younger and already looking better than these guys. Now, Matt Manning is a pitcher, so it's a little bit different. We're going to take a look at some of his stats here. I uh, got called up last year with Detroit, played in 18 games, 85 innings pitched. So ERA is at a 5.8. ERA is not perfect, but you want to take a look at other things like FIP. And FIP is a 4.62. So already we're having issues there because that's pretty, pretty high. But let's take a look at some of his other stats as well down across over here. And I had a whole video also on XFIP, a better version to use than FIP. But you can see as well, 5.13. 5.8 is just, it's so high, guys. You don't want to be investing in a player like that. Ideally, you want to have someone that has a sub 3.2 ERA in general, and you should have a FIP near that. If you have discrepancies between FIP and ERA, there are issues. Unless your FIP is much lower than your ERA, then it's saying that a pitcher got lucky. One thing I'd take a look at as well is the hobby loves strikeouts is K per nine. And you can see across the board, 
Manning did well in the minor leagues at 14 there, 13, 12, 11, 11, 10, 10. And then in the major leagues, he really struggled. He couldn't get people out with strikeouts. It's down to a 6.01. So if he's able to figure out his things and get back to this pre-K per nine numbers, I think that will help across the board. But I really don't like it at six. Big, big red flag for me. And you can also see over here, like XFIP and FIP and ERA, like some great areas. 1.89 ERA, 2.71 FIP, 3.47 XFIP, then 2.98 over here, but also had last year was bad, 4.2. And this was only, only 17 innings pitched, so I wouldn't really worry about that. Only 10 there, but was really well in the minor leagues uh, before going into the majors. Struggled in AAA as well, but He's going to be an interesting case. He might be the best pitcher rookie card in this, but my issue is the age side of things. I would maybe hold back on some Matt Manning cards just because there, there's no one else to look at on that side of things. And he was such a highly touted prospect since he was drafted pick number nine overall as well. And I don't remember. I think he was a top 20. Yeah, right here over here. Overall rank number 12. So he was a top 20 prospect at a time. Remember grabbing some Matt Manning cards out of a dime box. So I do have some Matt Manning cards. I haven't invested a ton of money into them, but I picked them up for like 10 cents or a quarter for some chromes. You just never know at that value. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Detmers. So Detmers was a top 10 pick drafted in 2020. He is younger at 22 years old, so we're taking a look at younger players. Detmers, about average, and we can see he is also a pitcher. Now, last year he pitched in five games, struggled really bad. A 7.4 ERA, negative 0.2 whip, 6.36 FIP, awful. But let's take a look at minor league stats. So we have double A data, triple A data, and then the major leagues. And we're going to take a look at that over here. So going across the board, 3.5 ERA, 1.13, but that was only an eight innings pitch. FIP it was a 3.27. We're looking at K per nine, 16, 12. And then in the major leagues is eight, which is higher than Manning. That 16 is nice. I, I really, really like it. I want to see some more data before making any decisions because it's only 54 innings but i'm really really liking that plus we see xfip is really low it's one point lower than his era so his era should have been lower just got unlucky but really really struggled in the major leagues let's see anything else over here we see our whip 1.171 1.79 so like Manning, actually, I would put his cards off to the side and wait and see. Pitcher cards are very, very cheap across the board. Hobby isn't a big fan of them yet, especially as a rookie. I'd put them off the side. You never know what's going to happen with his career. Angels don't have great pitchers, so he's going to have a lot of opportunity to pitch on that staff. And I'd give him another year of data to see what ends up happening He's going to have another two years of stats being able to pad on top of someone like Matt Manning. So if if both were equal right now, I'd maybe say grab Detmers over Manning for now. Again, things can change so fast. There isn't enough data in the major leagues to really say who's going to be a better pitcher long term. And Detmers doesn't have a ton of data as well in the minor leagues. Drafted in 2020 and they didn't have any minors that year and they got called up from 21. So he was a fast call through the minor leagues which is a sign of someone that is really, really good or a team needs help in that position. Angels do need help. But yeah, we'll see how that ends up going. But those are five players breaking them down. If you guys want to see a part two, taking a look at five more rookies in this set, let me know down in the comment section down below. I'm going to try to do this as well for series two and update as it comes out.